So hello everyone, my name is Antoine. Uh, I'm here to present our art article, which is called Dynamic Gaussian Embedding of Motors. So this work was done during my PhD thesis in uh, Lyon, in the Eric lab. And it's a joint collaboration with the Hubert Curien uh, lab in Saint-Etienne, uh, in which I am currently an assistant professor. Okay. So in this uh, work, we are interested in modeling OTA, which is a specific type of user that are only associated with textual, textual content. And uh, in this model, we wanted to take time into account as documents are usually timestamped and as they might be observed in a very large time window. So for example, if you, if you take a look at a researcher publication, for example, on Scholar, you can access all its publication history and some researcher have been working in the field since like close to 40 years. So web services common task with uh, such dynamic uh, textual data or recommendations. So for example, you can be interested in recommending uh, links between authors. For example, on Twitter, you would like to recommend uh, uh, following people that share uh, related uh, content with regard to the, the semantic of, it, of the publication. Or it can also be recommendation of uh, documents or reading recommendation to authors. So for example, this is what is done on Google Scholar. If you take a look at your uh, page on Google Scholar, you'll see that the web service recommend you some, uh, some new readings based on what, you, what are your, top, your uh, research topics. The last, uh, common, uh, the last common task is classification of, on clustering. And for example, this is done for uh, uh, expert research, for, uh, for example, reviewing processes. The main problem is that dealing with temporal data when modeling author is not simple. But the good news is that all the tasks that I cited below uh, here are very easy to solve when authors and documents are represented in a common vector space such as RK, inside which you can compute some form of similarities or use the vectoral representation as proxy to solve this task. So the first thing we do is that we split all the publication history in time bins. So here in this example, it can be years. And T1 is the first year of publication of the author and T big T is the last year of, uh, of publication of the author. And what we would like to do, the general idea of this article is to build one representation by time bin for each of the author uh, in the dataset. So what we will get at the end is evolving representation over time. So why learning dynamic representation is important in that case? Uh, here as an illustration, I provide uh, five decades of Jeffrey Hinton publications. So if you take a look here, uh, these are the most cited uh, publication for each decade. And you see that he started to work on uh, cognitive sciences, then switch to speech recognition with neural network and then to images, etc. So over the year, uh, its research interest and the content of its publication has evolved, both because his interest evolved over time, but, but also uh, because the techniques on the domain itself has evolved uh, over time. So when you recommend new reading to Jeff Hinton, for example, you want to take into account uh, the last year of its publication, but also all its publication history to refine the recommendation system. So in this work, we consider that there exists a pre-trained encoder that can map documents to a vector in our case. So we consider that there is a model that can map textual contents to a vector in our case. And uh, using this encoder, we will learn new representation of the authors that are probability distribution in the pre-trained document space. So why do we do that? Because we would like to measure some form of variability into the author uh, textual content on the topics of interest. So here, if we use, for example, Gaussian modeling, you can have a measure of variance in this latent space, which is correlated to the viability of its uh, topics of interest. After uh, building such space, you can use the similarities uh, on the representation uh, in the space as proxy for the application, so recommendation, classification, blah, blah, blah. 
So just a quick word about the prior works uh, in the field. So there is very few work focusing on author representation. So there is some uh, topic-based methods such as ATM, author to vec which is a recent, not that recent method, user to vec and only two dynamic embedding method uh, with the more recent being the work of uh, De La Salle, dynamic author representation. And the main limitation of uh, prior works is that they do not, uh, they do not learn joint representation of authors and documents. So you cannot compute similarities between author and document. They are transductive methods, meaning that if you observe a new author, you need to retrain the model to learn some representation of the author. And they uh, build representation of authors as vectors in the embedding space. So to circumvent all these issues, uh, what we propose uh, is this. So we consider that each author I is associated with the set of document representation calligraphic D that she or he has written at time T. Okay, so it's a set of vectors in RK. And the vectors in this matrix, in this calligraphic uh, D set are IID and generated according to a Gaussian, which take as parameter a mean dependent on the author and the time and the variance that change over time and for each other. So if we optimize this independently for all the time beans, uh, we will have uh, representation that are not smooth over time. So to deal with that, we introduce two types of uh, time dependence. So the first one is a stochastic dependence. We state that the mean of the author evolves according to a first order Markov model. So you have here a, a variance that will uh, integrate the information of how fast the author evolves over time. So the lower, the, the slower the author evolves over time. And the second type of time dependence uh, is this, which is that the mean of author i at time t is a function of all its publication history. So it's not dependent on, on the other mean of the author, but only of all its publication history. So for the stochastic type dependence, so here it's a simple Markov uh, model. The main issue with that is that the likelihood is very hard to maximize. So you have a product, uh, an integration over uh, a lot of uh, latent variables. But the good news is that here we have um, a product of Gaussian distribution that can be simplified. So with very simple uh, mathematical trick, uh, we can make appear uh, this dis distribution here which is uh, first a Gaussian on the mean of the representation at time t. This is the mean. Uh, something which is close to the variance with the normalizing uh, term here, and a function which do not depend uh, on the latent variables. So thanks to this uh, rewritten uh, trick, uh, we can make appear a very simple linear dynamic Gaussian system here, which is very simple and usual and a normalizing factor that we can use uh, when optimizing the likelihood. So this uh, term here is very easy to optimize with the EM algorithm on the Kalman field. So the main advantage of that is that this method is very fast because all the authors are independent. You can, and you can build very easily new representation of authors that appear in the testing set. The second type of uh, functional time, uh, time dependence is, is functional. So we state that the mean of author i at time t is a function of all its publication history until t, similar with the variance. But here, uh, the good news is that the likelihood is very easy to optimize because it contains only parameters and no latent variables. So as a function f, we propose to use a recurrent neural network of an aggregation function. Okay, so we first aggregate all the, the document embeddings in all the time beans, then we pass the sequence of vector into a recurrent neural network, and we take only the last uh, hidden state as representation for the author at time t. Uh, for the variance, we use a process very similar to the deep averaging network of, um, of uh, its uh, use. 
So we simply map the author mean to a measure of variance. So this can be a little bit odd to see, but first, this is what works the best in practice. And uh, second, the intuition uh, is very similar to the rational autoencoder. So the intuition is that some part of the space will be at, associated with higher variance. For example, it could be documents that are in between uh, topical cluster, semantic cluster. Um, so the model at the end for uh, the functional time dependent, so the second model looks like that. So first we encode document, we build matrices that we aggregate. We pass this sequence of vector into a, a recurrent neural network, and this uh, provides the mean variance. Uh, that we optimize uh, using maximum likelihood with the document encoder at time, with the document at time t. Uh, for the evaluation, uh, we use two data sets. Uh, first one, which is composed of scientific articles, uh, and the second one, which is composed of uh, press articles. On the task of author classification, mean prediction, and other uh, experiment that I'm not, not uh, showing here, but you can take a look at the paper. So only the title is available. So we have very short text, uh, short documents. So we use uh, uh, encoders that are well suited for such documents. So we use sometimes BERT, which is a BERT model with a pooling process, which is fine-tuned uh, in uh, fine-tuned and document representation, in percent, and we compare our two models of so the stochastic and functional time dependence to a version that does not take time into account, which means that we will optimize all the time beams independently. So first, uh, what we can see is that in the best case, our method outperformed by, by 10 points, the best method in the, in the state of the art, which is DAR. Uh, uh, the second, what we can see is that um, Every time the, the model with, with time smoothing is better than the model that optimizes independently all the time beams. So which means that this smoothing uh, improve the performance of the model, of the representations. And uh, that's it, this is micro F1, F1 sorry for that. Uh, for lean prediction, uh, okay, so here our method is not the best. It's close to the best method in the state of the art. But I think that this experiment is very interesting with regard to what it tells about collaboration in uh, scientific articles. So here the lower is better. This is the coverage error. And what you can see is that the best method uh, is not a dynamic one. So it's not uh, uh, that dynamic. But it's the static method, which means that the collaboration are not that time dependent. And uh, maybe it's something interesting to note because it might, uh, it might mean that uh, collaboration uh, stick over time or do not evolve that much. Uh, so as conclusion, uh, we showed the model uh, DGEA, uh, and we showed in uh, our experiment that using temporal information can improve the result uh, for classification. Uh, the second thing is that probabilistic approaches based on pre-trained representation seems to have many advantages. So one thing that I didn't mention is that uh, the RDGEA model, so this one here, is able to uh, learn representation of author that it hasn't seen during the training phase, because uh, you can see that all the parameters are function of all the publication history. So it's an inductive method and not only transitive. Uh, the main limitation with uh, this work is that we are using uh, Gaussian modeling only because it's simple, fast, and efficient. Uh, but uh, so, with regard to the document embedding method that we used, maybe we should consider other type of probabilistic uh, distributions. Uh, we did not uh, study the effect of the granularity. So in the data set, we only have access to uh, the year of the publication, but it would be interesting to, to, to study uh, coarser, grain, uh, coarser grain granularity. And uh, we made little, little, only a little study of the applicability of the variance in concrete situations. So the idea will be to penalize 
in a recommendation system, author with very big variance because they are too generalistic. Or on the other end, uh, you can you could want to penalize author that uh, publish, for example, in a very narrow domain. So this would be very interesting to study. So with regard to the Gaussian modeling for RDGA, it would be possible to maximize the model for many distribution probabilities, as long as the likelihood is well defined, of course. And for KDGA, so with the one which is based on uh, EM and Kalman algorithm uh, equation, sorry. So there is some ways to do that with other distribution. It's much more complicated because you have to do perform some drawings, etc. But we could use the particle approach, which is well known for uh, other distribution. And the uh, last last perspective of the maybe two last perspective of the work, I would like to apply this uh, framework to other type of data such as brain uh, data. So you can build, uh, for example, here you can build some region of the brain that are connected and measure the connectivity of the region of the brain. Then you have some dynamic signal here. So I, I'll be very interested in in working with uh, such data for classification of uh, pathological versus uh, control patient, for example. So if anyone is interested in working with that, I started some stuff, but I'm very new in the domain. So if you have some ideas, I'd be glad to hear them. And the last one, uh, so what we saw in our experiments in one paper that we published uh, in a workshop. So most of the document embedding method rely on, uh, on uh, topical information and not that much on stylistic information. And we would like to find a way to introduce these stylistic uh, features uh, into the, the training process of the author representation. So that's it, I'm a little bit late. I'm really sorry about that. So you can send me emails if you have some questions because you, we might run out of time. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks for the presentation. Yeah, any questions? Yeah, I wanna ask my first. So yes. uh, yeah, how, how do you use the uh, co-author relationship that kind of the graph between the authors, right? Can you say, sorry, can you say that again? Uh, the co-author relationship, co-authorship. Yes. So if two author uh, write the same article, then that graph information should be incorporated somewhere, right? Other than yes. the yeah, distribution over the document, how, how do you make use here, of that? Uh, so here in this experiment, we use the collaboration graph. So we draw some, uh, some links between author that wrote uh, common paper or common article. And uh, I think it's a very interesting type of data because I don't think it will evolve that much over time. And it's something that uh, you're right, we can maybe rebuild using the similarities in the latent space that we are building. And this is the type of information which is very interesting for our web services or such as med uh, social media and networks, et cetera. I don't know if uh, that was a, that good of a, an answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I understand. So, yeah, that, that's good. Yeah. Okay. But we, we are not taking this information into account when building the representation. And this is what I would like to do. Uh, and maybe switching to other type of data for which uh, it's very important to integrate this, uh, this information of uh, relations. And most, yep. uh, most importantly, on the web, in many settings, you have relations between author and so on. Yeah, I think that there are already a lot of work using the graph to derive the embedding from yeah, node to course. actor, yeah, until more uh, later. Yeah, and, we did, yes. and we did some, yes, exactly, the GNN and all the GNN literature, and we've done some work also on that, which were was published in, uh, in Ishkai in, in 2020. But the thing is that very few of them study dynamical attributes. So this is, that I think, what, is, what could be interesting here is that you have dynamic attributes. So it's not that easy to incorporate into the learning process. Yeah, I guess in industry, it's more common. They just re rebuild the embedding from scratch mm. if, 
if the graph evolves a lot, it's really hard to adapt dynamically. Yeah, yeah of course. But this is why why it's interesting because you start to do. 